Hello, welcome back to Empharma Trading Solution. Today we'll be discussing briefly drugs which are used in the, in the bronchial asthma and of course cough. cough. Now, what is uh, bronchial asthma? Of course, you know that bronchial asthma this is a chronic inflammation of the bronchial tubules or airways, which is characterized by hyperactivity, especially what we call abnormal sensitivity of the airways to the wide range of external stimuli such as dust, pollen, name them. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, now what happens uh, in the airways? The antigen sensitized patients by eliciting production of IgE type antibodies. Of course, these are the attached and bind to uh, and mast cells of the nostrils or the bronchial tissues and, of course, the basal fields. And hence, these release powerful bronchoconstrictors or what we call the inflammatory mediators. Now, which are those bronco constrictors? So, the, we have the leukotrienes, eh? uh, four, B4, C4, or D4, interleukins, histamine, posaganulins, adenosine, and PAF. Now, these ones also activate additional inflammatory cells. Eh? Inflammatory cells, the isnophils, basophils, macrophages, all these ones uh, contribute to the inflammation of the airways. Uh, also, we also have M3 receptor activator, which causes, which can also cause uh, block constitution. Because we are going to have uh, a drug which inhibits this, this uh, epitopia, which inhibits the M3 receptor, the muscarinic 3 receptor, which is found in the bronchial tubule. Now, let us first briefly uh, uh, distinguish COPD. Now, COPD involves inflammation of the respiratory tract with a pattern that differs from that of asthma. And remember, there we are having the mast cells. Here, the predominance are the neutrophils, the macrophages, cytotoxic T lymphocytes, and the T helper 17 cells. All these ones affecting the small airways. The small airways resulting in the small airway narrowing of so chronic obstructive bronchitis and um, bronchiolitis, sorry, and the destruction of the lung. Parenchyma with uh, uh, walls, of course, this is what we call emphysema because we know that COPD is characterized by bronchiolitis and emphysema, these fluids. Uh, which are those agents which are used in the management of asthma? Of course, the common ones have the beta 2 adenoceptor agonist. Of course, they bind to the beta 2 receptors located uh, in the bronchial smooth muscle and they result in smooth muscle relaxation. Or especially they inhibit also the bronchial release of the bronchial or the bronchial constrictor mediators and of course this one leads to bronchial dilation. For examples we have uh, the short acting ones, albuterol, salbi, what we call salbutamol, the albuterol, interbutyrin, metoprotenol. Now the long acting one we have uh, salmetrol and formetrol. Now all these ones are available in the combination with the uh, Corticosteroids mm, and uh, can be given either commonly, it is by inhalation, by aerosols, the meter dose inhaler, those inhalers, or others are tablets, and while some are injectables. But for quick relief, we, we, we always use uh, the inhalers. Now, I'm going to talk about the pharmacokinetics and the, the side effects. That's for you to find out, or you can contact us, we can help you. Now, the others are the methylxanthines, uh, they, they, they cause inhibition of the phosphodiesterase enzyme, which results in high concentration of the intracellular CMP, hence smooth muscle, bronch, smooth muscle, in the smooth muscle, uh, uh, this one is supposed to be in the smooth muscle, because in the bronchial smooth muscle, resulting into, uh, resulting into, sorry, resulting, sorry, resulting into bronchodilation. Now, examples we have theophylline, these are tablets, and aminophylline, the injectable drug. Corticosteroids, of course, these are the inhibit expression of the multiple inflammatory genes, or in the airway, eh? inflammatory mediators in the airway. Let us call it multiple, of course, genes, eh? which leads to expression of the, uh, the, the mediators. Now, examples which are used, we have biclomethasol, hydrocortisone, this one is used, it's an injectable used in, in, in acute asthmatic attacks, budesonide, budesonide, 
all these objects uh, are all used. Ensure you are aware of the side effects. We have described them in our inflammatory, in our inflammatory, uh, in our in our presentation, which is called inflammation. Eh? However, you can refer to your books. Yes, all the, the official books. Now, uh, we have the muscarinic antagonist uh, receptors uh, agents completely inhibit acetylcholine at M3 muscarinic receptors resulting in bronchodilation, such as ipatropia. This is included in COPD. Remember, I have said uh, here M3 receptor act, act can cause also bronchoconstriction. Now, uh, we also have the uh, antilucotriens. The Zafilucast, Montelucast, or Pranilucast, these are selective inhibitors of the uh, uh, agonist of this, the, 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 the inhibitors of the, of, the, of the receptors. So, the selective antagonist of the cystic leukotriene receptors in the airway, Zafilucast, Montelucast, and Pranilucast. We also have the Zeliton, which inhibits the, fi the five lipoxygenase. And of course, this one responsible for uh, synthesis of the leukotrions within the air, of course, we this one the inflammatory mediators. Now, the others which can be used, we have the mast cell stabilizers, uh, they act by stabilization of the mast cell membrane and prevent the, the, the influx of calcium, which is provoked by IgE. And of course, when, when uh, we know that when the calcium influx, we have already of these inflammatory mediators. We have the chromaline and the dochromyl. Um, the others which can be used, uh, of course, we know this one. This one is uh, is an is an agon, so almost the all the beta receptors, epinephrine, eh, is used is a powerful bronchodilator. Now, remember, it has been a short presentation. Uh, we we'll talked about the side effects which, which you can find out or you can contact us because I'm sure you have all these apps on your phones. Now, let me go to cough. Of course, cough is a, a protective reflex of the air wound and it clears energy the mucus. Of course, the cause of cough, we have the upper infection, TB, asthma, and all these ones. SCE. Now, uh, SCE inhibitors, of course, we know that SCE inhibitors, we don't treat the cough, but we just change to Arab. And of course, foreign substance. Now, of course, cough is due to irritation of the bronchial mucosa. Uh, of course, sends a fighting process to the cough center in the medulla and the fighting process uh, via the parasympathetic or motor nerves to the diaphragm and the costal muscles and causes increased contraction of the, of the diaphragm and abdominal intercostal muscles and hence the noise expression. Because when we are talking about the most of the drugs, we shall be saying they inhibit the cough center. Eh? The impulses in the cough center in the medulla. Now, which are those drugs which are used in management of cough? Of course, the common ones which we have uh, opioids which suppress the cough, cough reflex by acting in the cough center in the medulla, as said above, by raising the threshold for, uh, for cough in the medulla. They are well absorbed from the these are available as tablets. The common one we have is codeine, eh? pretex with codeine, you know, you know it. Because I have Cancer for local day, and even other, other others can be used, eh? like morphine, in case you have cancer. Now, um, uh, we have uh, constipation. These are these are the common uh, side effects: constipation, drowsiness, and sometimes respiratory depression. Now, let us look at dextromethorphan. Eh? Dextromethorphan it's also central acting, antitussive, and suppress. The cough, the cough reflex by decreasing sensitivity of the stretch sector in the respiratory tract. Now, um, dextromethorphan, it is commonly used because for it, it has almost the same mechanism as, uh, as uh, codeine, but for it has less, uh, there is less um, addiction to it uh, than the other one. It's available in the combination with this. See, I'm not those that you have in the pharmacies, they have dextro o Dextromethorphan or methorphan or dextromethorphan or they have codeine. We also have the benzonate. Eh? This is of course uh, 
it is uh, the spreading you know, the spreading um, <clears throat> these are these are uh, and and they're like anesthetic of course they numb the the throat and then they now the nerves within the within the lungs and then of course they prevent the impulse generation you can so you can also have the mucokinetics eh? mucokinetics stimulate the flow the spread of infection and then aid in the of the mucus from the airways now most of the drugs which you have in the pharmacy they are, these ones are very many combination guanifacin eh? guanfenesin sodium or potassium citrate ammonium sulfate or this or, or sorry, ammonium salts all these ones are used eh? can be used in COPD you also have the mucolytic agents they decrease the viscosity of the mucus by splitting the, the stuffed bones of the mucoproteins such as carbocystine astyacystine Cystein, and the common one in the pharmacy i think it has bromohexine and ambroxo these ones are common they are mucolytics eh? they increase the expression of the mucus now remember this has been a short presentation on, on asthma and cough medication now for the antibiotics uh, or for infection we shall cover them in a separate presentation here we are just we're not covered talking about them uh we, we also have the other ones which are used we have the systemic decongestants hmm? such as the ephedrine uh, we, again we can use uh, some 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 of these uh, syrups you have can again contain salbutamol hmm? bronco dilation because they cause bronco dilation hmm? Bronchodilation. Now, we also have uh, um, antihistamines, which are used um, in the second generation. Once citrusin, the citrusin can be used in case of having those running nose. Now, however, we also have the nasal drops. Eh? I need to put about those nasal drops, like sodium chloride, eh? nasal drops. Another one is oxy. Oxy something I'm forgetting that name. Huh? The nasal drop, which I'm sure you can give us. You can give examples. Since I've hinted about them, I'm sure you can get them. And other drug which I have missed. I said for antibiotics, they will be covered in a separate presentation. Uh, I always remain Wilson from M Pharma Training Solutions. Always contact us for more information, for more clarity. You can leave a comment on how we can improve. You can like our video, and in case you haven't subscribed, give us that subscription or that thumbs up shall always help you contact us and thank you very much